Hey YouTube, Darren here. Just kind of an update as to what all's going on. The season is starting down here. Um, people are starting to call around and look for riding mowers and everything. So I've started uh, getting everything ready. And uh, what I do usually is I'll buy them uh, through the cold weather and then kind of fix them up and everything. That's how I made my living uh, last year when I was out of work. Um, but I'm gonna do it uh, now, just kind of on a part-time basis and so I was going to show you what I got in as a trade um, a couple of months ago and I just pushed it into my barn I knew the time was coming I was going to go ahead and start working on it so I just kind of let it sit took a little time off during Christmas but here it is it's a craftsman 15 horsepower overhead valve 42 inch cut it runs good it's idled up a little high because well, that's one of the reasons they traded it in. But it, they have a problem with the deck. They couldn't get the deck to work. Let me cut this off. There we go. That's a lot better. Uh, I took this one as a trade-in, and a guy bought a yard machine from me and he uh, traded in this one uh, the deck would not uh, work he said and, and that's all he said the deck would not work turns out I believe the linkage is hooked up incorrectly um, runs great uh, it's a really nice mower all of this is nothing but cosmetic I can fix this I take them and pressure wash them and then uh, clean them all up and give everything a clear coat uh, of acrylic and shines like new money. So this is how I get all my parts too because I'll, occasionally I'll get one in uh, as a trade that has a blown engine or transmission's bad and I'll put them together or tear them apart and save them and I try to sell, sell a piece and a part here and there. But just kind of uh, what I do on the side. More to come though. Okay. Now, we'll take a look at it a little more in depth. It's filthy. There's so much grit and grime that it's accumulated on the carburetor linkage. Uh, that's one of the reasons that it's high revving. What I'll do is I'll pull the carburetor off, uh, dip it, soak it, and then go through and clean it. That's usually all it takes, especially with the gasoline now with all the ethanols. Uh, I'll pull the gas tank out, flush it, and uh, clean and flush the fuel filter right down there. Let me zoom in on it, that little red dusty thing. And that will take care of that problem. So the idling will be remedied. And I was looking uh, down on it. The battery needs a charge, but it will crank it. This is what it was is the linkage. I've already checked the, uh, can you see it? There we go. I've already checked everything else. The bearings are in pretty good shape, but I'm gonna pull the deck off, clean it out, sharpen the blades, and then I'm gonna grease all the uh, Zerk fittings that I can find under here just to go ahead and head off any problems. Now there is a jagged place that is ripped through the metal down here on this side. I'm gonna heat that up, beat it out, uh, weld it up and then grind it back down so this will all be painted a nice gloss black as well. I mean, it's nothing hard. It takes about an afternoon to clean these things up and get them back in shape. Take the shroud off, pressure wash everything because that's one of the things that makes them overheat down, down here in Alabama. Uh, especially like the dirt daubers and yellow jackets and the mice, they'll build nests up in these things. And it just, uh, they just heat up and when they get hot they quit running and people think, oh my God, they're ruined. But this is 
yeah just it's not bad it's in really good shape actually but more to come the problem was with this linkage rod that engaged the cutting deck uh, put tension on the belt and then caused it to engage and what I did was I just heated it up with a torch and then I sprayed a little lubricant on it let it sit and then I heated it up again and sprayed it and let it sit a little bit and then broke it loose finally and you can see uh, the dry area where the stuff didn't penetrate but I was able to get it I didn't use uh, oxyacetylene I just used propane uh, it was uh, not as invasive and did not take as long uh, that was about it got the job done don't breathe the smoke that's my safety tip for the day so there's that more to come in just a minute now I'll show you what I've gotten so far took this off and we fixed the uh, lever and I greased it really good with a nice heavy axle grease and this guy right here I heated it up a little earlier it's cool now beat it back into shape and now I'm going to clean this with my grinder and I'm going to prep it run a bead right here not to hide anything just to reinforce it again I've already sharpened these blades uh, you can kind of see this inside they're nice and sharp and this is the only troublesome spot and as you can see I've got good clearance so I'm gonna get it welded up I'll let it cool down and then I will pressure wash it and paint it and then it's gonna go back in it that'll be more for another day but I'll get this finished real quick and we'll go now this is one of the things that I would recommend this is just an old piece of flannel and I keep it around for pretty much this reason it's a pair of denim or a piece of denim and flannel uh, and I've soaked it in water from the creek gas tanks under it just to keep anything from sparking it shouldn't cause a problem I did that when I was grinding just because you know you just don't want to have a boom uh, while you're doing this I've got this just about ready and I'm going to get welding on it in just a second. Why am I welding it right here? Uh, close in this proximity to the gas tank, well it's propping it up pretty good and it's exactly where I want it. So more to come. There we go. I've got it filled in and I'm going to let it cool off a little bit and then I've got to grind it down and get it all nice and smooth. It came out pretty good. Uh, there's still going to be a high spot right there on that cutting deck, but heck, man, it's a used mower, so I can't complain. The only bad thing I have to say about these uh, flux wire welders is they do get a little messy. So uh, I found that if I get the area prepped really good, there's not as much spatter from old paint or grease. Um, but, and I am by no means waveform or fashion a welder. So, I've only been welding about a year, so take it for what it's worth. And more to come in just a minute. There we go. And there is the finished product. And you know, I'll try to get it from a bunch of good angles. Came out pretty good. I will prime this spot and then uh, hit it with a coat of gloss black and be done with the deck that is done but before I go I did want to uh, thank everybody that's watched and subscribed to my channel I really appreciate it uh, I enjoy getting all the messages from you um, and like I said this is just a bunch of stuff I do uh, but I appreciate it and these are the people that have subscribed uh, over the past couple of days and I just wanted to uh, tell them thank you personally like I do Tyler V9 thanks for subscribing man I appreciate it Doug Fackler, thanks for subscribing, man. And Nick Lucas, thank you all for subscribing. I appreciate it. And we'll get this one finished up. Uh, this weekend, I'll get the belt on kudzu, and we'll go do some riding. There's some trails. 
way back here you can see a ridge if you were to go back behind my property about a quarter mile there's a cliff and it's about a couple of hundred feet up and that is that mountain that you can barely see and so back there for a couple of hundred acres are some trails I've been looking at it on Google Earth and I've got it all mapped out as long as you stay off of the cliff <laughs> you should be pretty good but that's where I'm looking to go do some riding so that's it more to come thanks for watching guys don't let my wife know but it would make a fantastic off-road riding mower